On Monday, a Michigan farmer by the name of James Brizzle fulfilled my childhood dream, Nick's childhood dream, and many of us to found a near complete mammoth, a woolly mammoth in one of his soy fields. This is crazy. Paleontologists have already confirmed that this is genuine. The animal died about 11,000 to 15,000 years ago at 40, age of, uh, 40 years of age. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Now, the discovery was made, and now they're saying, we don't believe that the mammoth was actually killed by humans, but it was butchered by humans and stored for preservation. And it was a very common technique of preservation at the time where they created these pools uh -huh. and they submerged the meat and the bones of the animal and just cover it with water and mud. And then they will unearth it when they were Ready. going to eat it. Uh, but imagine just doing your regular farming of maintenance of your soy field and doing some digging. And then he was with his family and found this, 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 this long tube. And he's like, oh, this is probably a post or an old post that bended. And then they clean it up and they say, we need to call these guys. And they call the University of Michigan professor Daniel Fisher, one of the paleontologists there. And he agreed to go just for one day because he didn't have any more time. And they put together this whole operation and they unearthed very carefully a whole woolly mammoth, one of the rarest in the area. It's confirmed it's, it's, it's the same type of mammoth that they were found there. But they say, well, we do get these calls one or two times a year, but most of the time it's mastodons, which are more common. Mm -hmm. The woolly mammoth, and in this condition, and most of it, it's pretty incredible. The only thing that they didn't have were the hind limbs, the feet, and some other parts. But it makes sense because they were using this to feed the community. So and then they stored how, it. Then they stored it. Oh. But how crazy it is that you're doing your thing and then suddenly these bones come out. Yeah. He, the, the, the James Bristol, he brought his grandson, five years old. Imagine that's a future paleontologist yeah. right there. Like, oh, I remember when I was a kid, I was with my grandpa, and boom. A mammoth. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, Jose, I can't sit here. I'd be lying if I told you it was my childhood dream to find it. I never remember sitting down and saying, oh, I hope I find a woolly Come mammoth on. one day. I did. I, but, I thought it was. But, or a hidden treasure. Sure. There you go. There but you go. nonetheless, I'm saying, I'm saying, this is really cool. And I think it's perhaps most interesting that it was left there to eat later, kind of like this is this is just another case of like opening up your freezer and finding some uh, hamburger meat in the back that's been there for like, you know, since grandma's Thanksgiving in 1984. This was like an ancient caveman freezer, Dude, essentially, it's, to it's store crazy. food. That yeah. is awesome. And this, the, one of the highlights of this discovery is the fact that they were able to be really careful extracting this because most of the time when the public does these discoveries, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily call a, a professional or a researcher to help them out with the unearthing. They just do it on their own. And we've reported on many stories of how they pull things out of the, of the ground and they just destroyed it. Yeah. And the, the research uh, gets damaged. But now, because the paleontologists of the University of Michigan were involved, they were actually able to do a very good job of recouping this, but now there's a kicker to this story. Okay. And, you know, it's not that we're pointing fingers or anything. Normally, universities engage in these type of deals when the landowners actually sign off the rights to whatever they unearth. Okay. In this case, because of the, of the rush to do this operation, because otherwise they will have to plant again over the field, uh -huh. because this is a farm, at, you know, at the end. Um, they couldn't get that paperwork. So now, they, in good faith, they went and unearthed the mammoth, and now it's up to James Rizzo to be a nice person and donate the bones to the University of Michigan for further research. But legally, he doesn't have he's to. not forced to. <laughs> legally, he can just build a mammoth in his living room and just leave it there for his family <laughs> to enjoy. That's what I would do. That would be crazy. That's what I would do. But it's, it's, it's crazy to think that research, researchers and university they need to negotiate this type of thing if they go with their expertise and near these, these, these bones. And, you know, we have some pictures that you can see how well preserved some of these, the, you know, the fangs and the, some, some vertebrae of the neck. That, it's pretty crazy. It is. And they were really skillful and take them out, very well prepared. This is 15,000 year old, man. This is, this is an amazing it's, discovery. It, it's amazing. I think you meant tusks, not fangs. Tusks. I hope they didn't have fangs. That would be yeah. very terrifying. <laughs> An elephant-looking creature with fangs. <laughs> but it's crazy because now we've seen lately how not too long ago they used the DNA from a woolly mammoth and put it into an elephant. And we, not too long ago we were talking about the dinosaurs yeah. and what actually happened for them to go extinct. And we talk about this idea of bringing back these animals and try to show these, these new generations of those animals that no longer exist that is dangerous, that is kind of seductive, the idea to bring back to life some yeah. species, but also 
the idea and the experience of this family to found a mammoth in their uh, in their property is pretty amazing. They were some lucky guys right there. We want to know your thoughts. Please share them below in the comment section. And if you haven't, check our channel out and subscribe to the Lib TV too.